if you say no to pricing properly, you are saying yes to overworking yourself, yes to burnout, yes to tension in your family. Don't put yourself through this. For so many years, I baked every single Sunday. I missed church. I missed barbecues with my family for so many years because I refused to price properly because because I thought that it was somehow morally beneath me to charge proper prices to people. Yes. So don't do that. Don't make my mistake. I burnt out so many times. And now, um, you know, when I was in my 20s, I was baking that hard and that fast for that long where I would bake for like 16 hours a day just to make ends meet because I wasn't pricing properly. But the first thing I'm going to start off with is tackling the main questions that people have about home bakery pricing. Like, how do you know if you're charging too much or too little? What about all the complicated math? Isn't it like really complicated to figure out how much you're supposed to charge? So let me tackle that one first. But before I do, welcome. I'm Aurelia and I'm a home bakery coach. I help home bakers get consistent orders so they never have to worry about a stable income. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to get straight into it. Um, okay, so with home bakery pricing, how you know if you're charging too much or too little is to, to get something to help you do the math, okay? If you're not a mathematical genius or you're not mathematically inclined, that's totally fine. Totally fine. You don't have to be a math genius to have a successful home bakery business, okay? There's an app for that. <laughs> there are solutions for these things. And the easiest way is just to go to the link in my profile. If you're watching on Instagram, if you're watching on YouTube, then click the link below this video to join my free resource library. Because in there, I have a free pricing calculator where you add in all your information and then it spits out the recommended selling price for you. So you don't have to worry about all the complicated math. It does not work to just multiply your ingredient costs by three, okay? Some people teach that, that doesn't work at all because certain baked goods like bread, for example, um, the ingredients aren't very expensive. It's just like flour, water, salt, and yeast. But if but it takes a lot of time to make, right? It's very labor intensive. So if you only charge triple the amount that, that your ingredients costs, then you're gonna get a completely faulty selling price and you're going to run your business into the ground okay <laughs> pricing is so important it's so foundational in a home bakery business because that's where you make the money right if you don't charge enough if you charge too little then your business will go under much faster than you realize it's so important to get this right so if you haven't yet join my free resource library for home bakers no strings attached and then you can download my free pricing calculator it comes with a video as well that shows you exactly how to use the calculator so that you don't get stuck anywhere um, right so that is the the practical side out of pricing but there's another side to pricing and that is the emotional side this is what so many people don't talk about. We have to talk about the emotional side because otherwise people can give you all kinds of formulas and all kinds of tools to help you, but you will still feel too guilty to charge that price and therefore you won't. You just won't charge that much. If you have been um, feeling guilty, like, you know, I'm just a home baker. Who am I to charge this price? You know, often you will fill in the details in the pricing calculator and then it will um, give you a recommended selling price, but then you just feel so awful to charge that price. You feel way too bad because you think, you know, I'm just a home baker. Who am I to charge these kind of prices? It feels too high. And maybe what often also happens is that people sometimes live in like a more rural town, a more rural community, and then you feel too guilty to charge those prices. Or you feel like, well, I don't have a qualification. I don't have a degree in baking. So who am I to charge these kind of prices? I should charge less. Um, so that is where the trouble comes in. Let's talk about that part next. I first of all want to say that I really understand how you feel. Okay. If you have been feeling guilty to charge the prices you should be, and then you undercharge people or you give discounts left, right, and center. Um, I really, really understand how you feel. And then what happens after that is that you then have to take on more and more and more orders to try and make ends meet. So then you are baking weekends, you are baking after hours, you are baking in the middle of the night and in the morning, morning, noon and night, you are baking to try and make ends meet, saying yes to every order that comes your way, because otherwise you're not going to survive financially. And all of those things are symptoms of undercharging. Okay, that's why it's so important that we talk about this stuff. So I understand how you feel, but there's hope and things can change. Okay, you don't have to work yourself to death to have a successful business. 
It's not true. You don't have to do that. And pricing correctly is how you change that. Okay, now in the home bakery business, you need to understand that we can't compete on price. We can't compete on price because there's always going to be someone that's cheaper than you. In a home bakery business, there's always someone that's cheaper. For example, people can always just go to the grocery store and buy baked goods there for like a quarter of the price or whatever. The reason a home bakery business succeeds is not because you are the cheapest person around. That is not how a home bakery succeeds. We can't compete on price. There's always going to be someone cheaper than us. The way that we succeed is to complete is to compete on value and to compete on quality. We offer a luxury kind of service, okay? People get baked goods baked to the same standard and quality with the same kind of love and freshness as their mom or their aunt would make it for them. That is incredibly valuable. They are getting that service of having something that is personally made for them that hasn't been standing on the shelf for three days or four days or sometimes even seven days. They are getting it fresh, made to order and with the same kind of love and attention to detail, not shortcuts, with the same love and attention to detail as their own family member would have made it for them. That is extremely valuable. They are getting their bread buttered on both sides, okay? This is extremely valuable. Don't look down on that. Don't make it less than it is. Um, you are offering an incredibly valuable product here, an incredibly valuable service, and it's worth a lot. That's why we charge people for that. We charge people for that time, absolutely. The important thing you need to remember here is that everyone doesn't spend money the same way you do. You are not your ideal client. You are not your ideal client. Everyone doesn't see money the same way we do. We as home bakers are typically not like super well off, are we? We are like just just normal people at home, you know. Um, so just because it's not worth it for us to spend X amount of dollars on a, a, on a cake doesn't mean it isn't worth it for anyone. Don't assume that everyone sees money the same way you do. People spend money on fascinating things. Sometimes you will get couples like my husband and I, when we got married, we slept on single mattresses on the floor for the first year of our marriage because we couldn't afford to buy a bed. Yet we went to eat out, um, went out to dinner at least once a month. Um, and spent money on that because that's a priority for us, because that's how we invest in our relationship. And that's a fun thing that we love to do. Also, you will see often in like poorer communities, um, people will still prioritize something like a really nice car or a fantastic front door or some really awesome shoes. People spend money on different things. They get a kick out of different spending habits. Okay. And for some people, it is so worth it to spend their money on food. It's like their favorite thing. Like me, for example, you know, I would rather go eat out five times than buy one dress. <laughs> As you know, I'm not a big fan of dresses. But yes, don't project your own spending priorities and habits onto everyone else. You are completely doing yourself in if you do that. You need to charge the prices um, that, that the pricing calculator recommends because that's what it's worth. And don't make people's minds up for them. Let them decide for, for themselves if they want to purchase this from you or not. Don't decide for them in advance that they that they won't want to pay this money for something. Um, that's so not true. Okay. So not true. If it were true that customers only prefer cheap prices, there wouldn't be any luxury brands in the world out there. You wouldn't get um, fancy brands like Gucci and Prada and fancy car brands like Ferrari and whatever. Um all these luxury brands exist because there are people that spend money on all kinds of things. And we can offer basically a luxury food service. Now you might be saying, but what about, you know, I want to make my baking affordable for everyone. What about people that can't um, afford these things? What about them? I don't like excluding people with my prices. Now, let me challenge you with this thought. In life, people with more money can just buy more things. That is a a harsh fact of life, okay? People with more money can buy more things. But if you want, did you ever want something like really, really nice, like a fancy pair of shoes in a shop? What did you, but, but you couldn't afford them. What did you do then? Did you just say, oh, what a bummer. I, I guess I'll just never, ever, ever have these. You know, you probably saved up for them if it was worth it for you. You saved up. Or maybe you contacted friends and say, listen, guys, my birthday's coming up in two months. 
I've got a present that you can contribute towards. And then you get friends to contribute and you buy the thing that you want. That is how we make things work. If we really want something, we'll find a way to buy it. And it's the same way with your baking. You don't have to assume that just because some people can't afford your baking, no one can. And then you lower the prices of everything for everyone. That's not, not, that's not realistic and it's not sustainable. People with more money can buy things that they want more often. People that can't afford it will save up to buy it. And what you can also do if you live in a rural community, have different baked goods, like have different ranges. Let's say, for example, you bake cakes. Then you can have like a luxury range or a gourmet range. And then you just have your classic range where things are, um, are more affordable. But then you don't use the most expensive butter in the world. And you don't use the best chocolate chips in the world. You basically use ingredients that are still good quality, but not the best. You know, and that way you cut down. You can maybe use more simpler, faster decorating techniques so that you don't spend so much time on those things. And that way you do accommodate people that want something, but... It's not going to suck up all your time and all your energy and all your resources to make that thing. And then you end up losing money. So have like a, a like an entry range or a classic range, whatever you want to call it. And then a gourmet or luxury range. Um, and you don't need to have a huge amount of options in that classic range. It can be just like three different flavors. Just so that there's something for people to buy that aren't super well off or just generally well off. Okay, that's what you can do to fix that. And also, if you are planning to bake for coffee shops and restaurants, etc., if you want to have wholesale supplying deals, then sometimes you will need to compromise a bit. Like I, I baked full time for coffee shops for about six years. It was really intense, but I realized very quickly that I can't use lint chocolate in all of this stuff. It's not sustainable. So I had to find other brands that I could use that still taste good. But not um, they're not as expensive. So basically a compromised version of my brownies I had to create um, just to make it sustainable. Uh, and then I can charge those wholesale clients. I can charge them less because they need to also make their profits, you know. So we can't expect to make this luxury, um, incredible, like ultimate brownie and expect wholesale clients to pay full price for them. And then they still need to like double the price to make their own profit. That is not realistic. So sometimes you do need to compromise a bit with wholesale clients. Okay. People say all the time to me, they say that if I really cared about people and cared about baking, I would just do this for the love and not for money. Have you thought that? Or have people said it to you? I hear this all the time. People tell me this. They have this like backlash you know this reaction no i should do it for love and not for money but let me let me put it to you this way doctors for example they charge high rates right especially if you get a specialized doctor like a dermatologist cardiologist all the ists then it gets really expensive but they charge these prices so that because they offer up a lot of family time they offer up all their free time to help people if we told them they have to just do all of their work for free, then they wouldn't be able to do this sustainably. The, you know, their wife would need to work themselves to death or their husband would need to work themselves to death to make ends meet to provide for their family. So we obviously doctors do it for the love as well. I mean, you can't work 36 hour shifts if your heart isn't in it. So they charge proper prices so that they can keep on helping people. In our home bakery business, we need to charge proper prices so that we can keep on baking for people. If you don't charge proper prices, your business will die. And it's not like pricing properly is, makes us greedy or something. Not at all. In the same way that plants need water to survive, a business needs money to survive. It's a plain fact of business. If you don't make enough money, your home bakery is going to die and you'll need to get a desk job. And it's going to be very hard to love people with your baking then, isn't it? So it's the best, most sustainable, most loving thing we can do to charge our clients proper prices because then we can keep on baking for them for years to come. And they can keep experiencing the same high quality baked treats. And we don't burn out and get sick. Or we don't have to close our business because we are charging properly, which means we can take enough time off to rest and recuperate. And we can spend enough time with our family. If you say no to pricing properly, you are saying yes to overworking yourself, yes to burnout, yes to tension in your family.
don't put yourself through this. For so many years, I baked every single Sunday. I missed church. I missed barbecues with my family for so many years because I refused to prize properly because, because I thought that it was somehow morally beneath me to charge proper prices to people. Yes. So don't do that. Don't make my mistake. I burnt out so many times. And now, um, you know, when I was in my 20s, I was baking that hard and that fast for that long where I would bake for like 16 hours a day just to make ends meet because I wasn't pricing properly. And yes, now in my 30s, I'm paying the price for that. I'm paying the price for it now. My ankle will never be the same again. My body already already wasn't normal to start off with, but I completely destroyed my body. Well, not completely, but I did do some lasting damage to my back, to my shoulders, to my neck, to my ankle, my knees, all of these things because I worked too much, too hard for too long. And it all comes down to not pricing properly. That's where it begins. Okay, now the next thing that people often have issues with is undercharging. Let me explain undercharging to you this way. You are actually charging all of your customers full price, whether you acknowledge that or not. You are charging all of your customers full price, even when you undercharge them. Let me ask you a question to enlighten and explain this whole thing for you. Do you ever think, you know what? If people just say, thank you, thank you, Aurelia, this cake is magnificent. It's everything that I wanted and more. You are so amazing. You are so wonderful. We love this cake. You are so fantastic. Thank you so much. And th then you think, if they just say something like that, then that's more than enough for me. That's more than enough for me. I used to do the same thing. But actually, you know, you are still charging those customers that you're discounting, giving discounts. You are still charging them full price because whatever you are not charging them in money, you are expecting them to make up for invalidation. It happens to all of us because we are home bakers that don't have qualifications. We don't have degrees. Typically, we feel very insecure in ourselves and we feel inferior compared to other businesses out there. So we discount um, because we want people to praise us and to give us this um, to give us all kinds of um, compliments and praise and and just love for giving them discounts so that we get that validation and then we feel worthy. I know it's very hard to hear this. This is the truth bomb of the day. Um, yes, if you want to stop, stop undercharging, I have a blog post for that as well, where I take you through the steps of how to do that. If you are watching on YouTube, the link's below this video. If you're watching on Instagram, then click the link in my profile, go to Home Bakery Day links, and then go to the pricing section. Then you will find everything that we are talking about today the, the post about undercharging and another post about pricing tips for your home bakery the link to the pricing calculator all of that stuff you need to stop undercharging because otherwise you're going to bleed your own business dry this is a decision that's in your hands as a business owner you aren't a victim of giving discounts you're not a victim of undercharging you need to take charge here and make a decision in your business otherwise you're going to be burning yourself out working yourself to death for years to come and i don't want that for you and i'm sure you don't want that for yourself either i'm sure that you want a sustainable life a sustainable work and life balance with time for your family and time for yourself right so this is why you need to stop and stop and charging and pricing properly okay and now for the rest of of this um live i'm gonna answer your questions that you guys shared with me in my instagram stories Let's go with the first one. Um, pricing my time. Okay. If you are starting out in your home bakery business, you need to charge at least minimum wage of your country for your baking. As time progresses, you can increase that rate. As you get more experience, your time becomes more valuable. So over time, you can increase that. But if you're starting out, then at least charge minimum wage. Okay. Next one. So my questions are like down here on my computer. I'm actually sitting on the floor in a bedroom. We're not at home. We are um, on holiday. Well, I'm technically working on holiday. But anyway, um, okay. When I, when I give my customer a quote, they just vanish after they got it. This is going to happen in your home bakery business. Have you ever watched, uh, looked at, looked at um, like fancy shops when you go to the mall? And sometimes I like to just walk in them and browse around and I just hope that an, a shop attendant doesn't ask me if they can help with something because then I'll, I'll just be like, no, thanks. I'm just looking around. And they're like, hmm, she can't afford it. 
which is totally true. But when we walk around in shops like that, you will often get window shoppers. You will get people that just walk in there for the experience of it. They're just checking out um, all these nice things. They just love the ambiance in there. We all do it, right? We all walk into shops that have things that we can't afford. And it's going to be the same in your home bakery business. People are going to ask for a quote. They're going to come to your website. And what you do isn't going to be for everyone. You don't have to please everyone for you to have a, a successful business. You don't need everyone to like you or to agree with your prices or to love your products for you to have a successful business. Not at all. It's a guarantee that some people aren't going to like you and that's okay. Just focus on the ones that do. Um, there are going to be loads of people that love your baking. Loads of people that are willing to pay the prices um, that, you know, that, uh, that that you are listing your things at, they're going to be happy to pay for it. Absolutely. But not everyone will, and that's fine. Just let it go and move on. Window shoppers are welcome. Don't shun them. Don't hate them, you know, for for just window shopping your, your business and your baked goods. That's totally fine. Give them room to do that. Maybe in future they will order something or they'll save up for it or they'll club with a bunch of friends and buy something together for a festive occasion. So you never know. Um, always be kind anyway if they reject your quote. That's totally fine. Should I round up my prices so they all cost the same or individualize prices for each individual thing? I highly recommend that you um, work out one average price for like all your cupcakes or for all your cakes. Sometimes you will make more profit and sometimes less on those items. That's fine. Um, you can, as I said earlier, you can have like a basic range and then you can have like a luxury range where you charge more for things. For example, with my, um, with my, with my cakes, I have like my classic cakes and then I have summer cakes and because they all contain berries, I make all of them more expensive, but then it's all like in one category, you know, so you can price things differently in each category. Um, and then everything will kind of iron itself out. Some products will make you more profit, others less, but it's more, it's simpler for people and it's easier for them. Um, if you don't have like 100 different prices, but have like one price for one category, it's easier for them to wrap their heads around it, uh, around it and it's easier for them to remember for the future. That way you are helping out your customer and making it simpler and easier for them to buy from you. Okay, next question. How to convert a recipe from cups to grams and then price according to that. Okay, so on the um, on the pricing calculator, well, yes, in general, I definitely recommend that you work out all your recipe costs with your ingredients in grams. Grams are so much more accurate. If you want to bake professionally, you need to have consistent results in your baking and grams give you a type of accurate accuracy that cups and ounces just can't. Oh no, ounces can. Ounces are, are weight as well. But cups and milliliters, um, it just, it, it makes you slower in your baking because you have to measure each thing in a little cup. It makes way more dishes. Get yourself a digital kitchen scale. It's the best $20 you will ever spend in your life. It makes it so much easier to quickly add something to the same bowl. And yes, the way you convert things to grams you can search on Google for like, you know, one cup of flour um, in grams. You can get weights for one cup of sugar in grams, one cup of X, Y, Z in grams. You can search that on Google or what I recommend that you do. Once you've gotten yourself a digital kitchen scale, make your same recipe the way you always do. Measure the way you measure and then weigh it in your bowl and make a note next to all the ingredients and their quantities in grams so that you know how many grams. And then you, you only have to do that once and then you are set for the rest of your life. You only have to go through that process once of converting your recipe to grams and then you're good to go. Once you start doing it this way, you're going to see how much time you save and how many dishes you save. It's so much faster. Get yourself a digital kitchen scale. We need to be consistent in our baking and this is how you do it. The time you spend on your baking is a sensitive topic. You can't charge people for passive time. For example, if your brownies are cooling there on a rack, you know, you finish baking them, putting them on a rack, they're cooling. You can't charge customers for that time. Not at all. Um, think about, you know, next time you bake something, keep track. Keep track in that recipe of how much time you are spending, um, weighing the ingredients, mixing the batter. When you are baking something, when something is in the oven, you also can't charge customers for all that time either because you can mix the next thing of the different of another customer while that stuff is in the oven. So I like to make it like, half the time. I like to charge for half the time when something is baking, unless it's something like cheesecake. I mean, cheesecake is in there for an hour and 45 minutes, then I'm not going to charge half of that 
um, even. I will probably charge them for a quarter of the time because only a quarter of the time I need to check it and turn it, turn the pan or something like that. But uh, yes, only charge your customers for active time. This is often a huge mistake that, um, that, that home bakers make when they're using the, the pricing calculator is they charge for all the baking time and all the cooling time. And then the price is like super high because they're actually charging for time that they aren't working, actively working on that customer's order. So the time is very important. Make notes next time that you bake something, write it down on your recipe, how much time you are spending working on that thing. And then you know, once again, you do these things once off and then you are set for life. You know how long it takes you to make that thing. And this also includes things like grocery shopping um, and what else? Yes, like a, just a, a base time for the admin that you spend um, working on the client's order. It's not a lot. It's like 10 minutes, you know. And also, very important, don't spend, you can't charge your customers. Let's say, for example, you spend an hour decorating each customer's box. You can't charge them an hour extra because you chose. You are the person that chose to spend an hour decorating that box. So be careful in things like that. Time, try to save time wherever you can. Don't try to do the maximum everywhere you can. There are simpler, faster, way of, faster ways of doing things. Um, so, yes, if you want to know how to get your baking done faster, I have a blog post for that as well. If you're on YouTube, the link's below this video. If you're on Instagram, click the link in my bio. Go to Home Bakery Day links. And then un under baking, under the baking section, there will be a blog post for tips to get your baking done faster. That helps a lot as well. How do you account for constant inflation? Okay, with inflation, that's just something that happens. I recommend that you update your prices at least once a year. And that means, yes, going back to your, you know, to calculating your prices at least once a year um, so that you can account for inflation. You can do this twice a year as well because then the price increase won't feel as drastic to people. But once a year is also fine. Everyone raises their prices every year. I mean, look at the grocery store. They don't feel bad about it. They just raise their prices and people have to just make do. And the same thing in your business. You don't need to apologize every time you raise your prices. Everyone raises their prices and, and you need to as well. It's part of business. Do it. Carry on with it. It's how life works. Okay. Next one. Pricing for family and relatives. Ooh, I love this one. Love this one. Okay. Family and friends, well, they, they are often just ignorant. They mean well, but they are ignorant of how much effort we put into our baking. They don't realize how much love and effort and time goes into it. And that's okay. Don't judge them for it. Everyone isn't going to understand what you do and why you charge what you do. Um, they won't get it. And that's okay. Love them and accept them anyway. Just let it go. The relationship is worth more than your business. That is so true. Your family relationships are more important than your business. So they won't understand and that's okay. But what you can do, you can work out full price for all your baked goods and then charge all your family and close friends 10% less. Make a rule for yourself because then it's not complicated and awkward and, you know, full of tension and anxiety every time a family member or close friend orders something. Make a rule for yourself. They get 10% less and that's, that's how it works. And think about it this way. If you had a, a family member, let's say your brother is a second-hand car salesman, and then he gives you 10% off when you buy a car from, from his business, you will be over the moon that you got a 10% discount, right? That's awesome. It's a, it's a kind gesture, a kind and loving gesture, but you don't need to give more than 10%. Um, some of your family will be upset that it's only 10%, but that's, that's their problem. It's okay. Just tell them, um, unfortunately, my prices are my prices, but I can recommend this baker or that baker that charges cheap prices, or if all else fails, you know, the baking section at the grocery store. The percentage of profit that you add to your order, um, according to the pricing calculator, the recommended amount that you profit that you add extra is 30%. That's a nice flat rate to go with, especially if you're charging minimum wage. Um, as you're actually just, just always make it 30%. Even when your skill increases, then just make your wage per hour more. Don't increase your profit percentage. Profit percentage can just stay as it is. 30% is a good rule of thumb. Yes, many people ask, just like, I don't know if I'm costing too low. I don't know if I'm costing too high. Just 
Don't rely on your feelings for these things. It's not about how you feel about the price. If you feel it's too low or you feel it's too high, you need to just base it on math and reason. Just reason. Keep your emotions out of this. It's just about reason. So do the math. Use the pricing calculator to make your life easier. That's how you do it. Okay. Sometimes clients expect lower prices. I feel that I have the low price enough um, and the ingredient prices are quite high. Okay. Yes, some you aren't going to be a good fit for every customer. Some of them will think your prices are too high. And that's fine. They can go somewhere else. You can refer them to the grocery store's baking section. Your business is not a good fit for everyone. Luxury, high quality home baking is not for everyone. Don't take it as immediately the fault is, is with you. What if the fault is with the customer and not with you? <laughs> okay, the customer isn't always right, especially when it comes to your pricing. They don't have anything to do whatsoever with your pricing. But be careful here. If your photo quality isn't good, then your baking isn't going to look very valuable to customers. It's so important that you take good quality photos of your baking. And by that, I don't mean that you need to get a professional photographer. Not at all. You don't need to get a fancy camera. Not at all. There are things that you can do. There are um, little tips and tricks that you can apply to take good quality photos of your baked goods um, for free yourself. Um, and you can actually check in my on my Instagram. There is a story highlight with photo tips. You can check that out. And if you guys want, like I have photography, um, home bakery photography and editing lessons um, in my large course, Home Bakery Pro. But if I get enough people requesting this, I can separate that for you as a course in itself so that you can learn how to take high quality photos and edit them yourself so that you don't have to pay for photographers. But then people see your baking as more valuable and then they are willing to pay more for it. Changing the quality of your photos honestly enabled me to start charging like 1.5 times the prices that I that I did in the past. That is the the, the power of good photography. So if you want me to do that, then if you want me to separate those lessons about photography and editing in a separate little course, in a mini course, then comment below this video and then I will, if, then, if there's enough people, then I will do it. Cool. Um, right. That is it for today, guys. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, just to repeat all the links that you need. If you're watching Instagram in my profile, go to Home Bakery Day links. Scroll down to the pricing section. Everything you need is there. The link to get the pricing calculator. Um, well, actually, that link is already in my profile. Just join the resource library. Wherever you see a link to join the resource library, do that because that's where you get the free pricing calculator. It includes a video tutorial that shows you how to use that, so how to use it so you don't get stuck or make mistakes. And then there's also a link to my blog post about how to stop undercharging. And there's another blog post about um, six tips to price confidently and correctly. And yes, just remember, don't don't make light of your pricing. OK, the success of your home bakery business hinges on your pricing. You have to do this correctly. It's so important. This is not something you can leave for one day, to sort out one day. If you don't price correctly, your business is going to die quickly or a slow and painful death. It's not fun. It really sucks. And that's when all the, the burnouts and things happen to try and make ends meet. Don't do that to yourself. Price correctly. The resources are here for you. Just use them. Okay, great. Keep baking. Keep shining. Keep making the world a better place. One bake at a time. And I will see you guys real soon. Cool. Bye.